Now, if you're just tuning in, it's our ladies' night out, and we're asking how can we rise above tribal biases, especially in our leadership, and go back to when it was, I am a Nigerian first. So our phone lines are open. We can also hear your conversation. Tweet at us at Wayshow Africa One with the hashtag Wayshow, or you can send us an SMS or WhatsApp to zero eight one eight zero three eight four six six three. So, Isi, I just wanted to hear your, you know, your thoughts before we open the phone phone lines, you know, and all of that. What Uti was saying, you know, because it, it resonates so well, right? Exactly. Truly, truly. Once, it, it, and this is even beyond leadership, governor. This, if you mm -hmm. hear say your uncle, they don't appoint him as NNPC chairman, mm -hmm. automatically. I Everybody don't, sending CVs. I don't hammer. Or your, fa your, your, your brother was just made um, CEO of a company. Mm -hmm. All of a sudden, you start Our to claim ownership. Land. Do you understand? Ah, now Pepe don't rest for this family. Mm -hmm. This is the structure, the burden on leadership. So let us even leave politics aside. Mm -hmm. Across all the cadre, uh, leadership, like in uh, jobs, I mean, if you go to top um, companies, and, mm -hmm. it's the same um, thing. thing. Everybody wants you know that it is your person that is there. So why, why is this so? Why can't you just think of all of us first, right? I mean, the collective good of the country. Why is it my own, not my person? Is it not from a selfish point of view? Uh, um, this, I, it, it, like Uti said about the people, we, I don't want to say we Nigerians are greedy, but I would say that to a large extent, we are selfish because we want a situation whereby we rise above others or rise above those that are around us. That was how we had the generator, I better pass my neighbor mm -hmm. in the first place. Mm -hmm. So things like that. And I, if we step it into leadership, there is also something I, I, I think we should take into cognizance when we are trying to vote in the next president or the next uh, leader mm. of Nigeria. When we had PK a while back, um, he says something about how we groom our leaders. Mm. We do not groom our leaders the right way. How? Because our leaders are supposed to have been groomed from day one when they were small. You can't take on a, a, a country like Nigeria with so much diversity, with so much differences. In, with, I just woke up one morning and I said, oh, this is the man that would set us free. It's not possible. You have to groom your leader from day one. This way, not only leader, we are grooming. We are grooming the people. The whole cadre. Because if you have the leader, right? Because I remember when, Obas, when um, uh, President Buhari came in, in 2015, everybody was on their toes. When mm. you go to the ministry, everybody was on their toes. But the moment he appointed the people he appointed, it was back to status quo. Mm. It was like, oh, it's business as usual. Mm. So it made no big deal. It was no biggie. So in America, when they're grooming their leaders, they groom their leaders Even from the day UK, yeah. one. Yeah, everywhere, so if actually. we can have a, a, some, uh, an institution like that, we will go far. OK, I think we have Kennedy from Abuja. Thank you for joining us. Let's hear what you have to say. Is Kennedy there? Okay, I don't think we have him there. So, Uti, you are back? <laughs> yes, I, I, would, I would just, um, I, as I caught Isi um, and what she was saying and the question that you asked, and I just wanted to say, I wanted to add to that. So, I think selfishness is like the second layer. I think the first layer is culture. Really? You, you think so? Mm -hmm. Yes, well, it's culture. When you grow up in a household from a, um, I, I apologize, this is not me, you know, putting one tribe or the other, but I want to say it in a language so that, you know, when you hear people say, okay, let me even come back to my language. Let me Okay, come Uti, back hold on on that thought quickly, Uti. Uti, hold on. Let me quickly take Kennedy, then I'll come back to you. Kennedy, are you back? Thank you for staying, um, for calling. Let's hear what you have to say. Are you sure he's there? Hello? Okay, we can't hear you if you can hear. Hello? Yeah, Kennedy, thank you for... Hello, oh. can you hear me? We can hear you now. Please go ahead. Let's hear yeah, what you have to say. The topic um, you are discussing is very timely. I think our leaders are actually the cause of our problem. Nigeria has very good policies in place. But, you know, um, scholars have described Nigeria as a graveyard of good public policies. What I'm trying to say in essence is that you oftentimes see our leaders trying to bring in politics, trying to bring in uh, nepotism, 
into everything that we do. Instead of considering merit first, you see them considering other uh, ingredients that will cause division in the country. For instance, if we have a president from the northern part of the country, you always see him giving attention to his people, the northern people. The truth is that Nigeria belongs to everybody. If you are a leader, you should make sure that merit comes first before anything. And with that, Thank you. I think the country will move forward. Thank you, Thank Kennedy, you so for much. your contribution. So, Uti, you were talking about culture. Mer Mer Mary, talk, just, just to say, to add to what Kennedy was saying, meritocracy can't work in Nigeria. Uh -huh. I mean, we have zoning. Mm. We take our leadership Major ground. Mm. Whether you're right, you're not right. We're getting a leader from the Southeast. It doesn't matter. Mm -hmm. So I agree with him that our policy, I mean, our con we does. still come back to the Constitution. Is yeah. the Constitution working for us? Mm -mm, yes not. or no? Mm -hmm. Yeah. But I mean, if I go back to what I was saying about, about culture. culture. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah, so I, I was going to refer to my own tribe. Now, I'm Shekiri. I'm from the Niger Delta. We're a very small tribe. But we can remember the painful times between the Shekiris, the and Jaws, the Jaws. When I grew up, right, and it's a narrative, any Shekiri people out there will validate this. Your people will say, oh, eh, I ujo, ujo. that's how we talk about it. You know, it's like, don't bring anybody to this house that is a job that you want to marry him. Mm -hmm. Urobo is acceptable. It's okay. But when you start hearing, ah, I subu. that's how, you know, that's Urobo in my, in my language. There's always a thing. Mm -hmm. So what happened is that in the past, when we were growing up, it was just a joke. It was, a, you know, it was that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. But then when you go through all the issues that happened in that area, the gaps are widened, mm -hmm. right? When you have a leader who is doing things, those gaps are widened. Mm -hmm. So we have over the years from, you know, the last 30, 40, 50 years, those gaps have been steadily widening. Hmm. And we find ourselves where we are today, where all the factors now are working against us. Hmm. Our economic instability, everything is, so it's now finding the greed. Hmm. It's, it, you know, so the greed is out of necessity, it's out of survival for some people that I can be bought over and then, you know, so it becomes selfishness, me first. But, but that foundation it, is from a lot of, the way a lot of us were raised. And we can, you know, if you're Igbo, you have your own references. If you're healthy, you have your own references mm. of how you refer to other tribes. Mm -hmm. But so it wasn't this, meant to be a fight. Yeah. So would you say that we have been, we have been groomed to hate? Is it hate or to think about yourself first? No, I just want her to hate. elaborate Do on we that. Just, we, we've, we've, We've evolved to lose all the positives of our culture. Mm. We've lost the connectedness. We've lost, I mean, when there's no patriotism, who is ready to die for Nigeria? Nobody. But again, all these values that mm. will bring us together as a multi-tribal nation. And it's not just Nigeria that's struggling. Look across the map in Africa, so many countries, you know, Som Somalia split, so many, I mean, there's just too many things. So you, you find that, all these things all just work together. Absolutely. If we were a thriving nation, if there was money, if everybody was doing well, would tribalism be such a, would it be so, like if poverty wasn't as big as it was, mm -hmm. would it be so bad? Mm. Because if you take what happened in Oyo State, I had a friend who said he went to fix his car and all the mechanics were talking about was what happened in Oyo State. Mm. They're not very literate. They're going to come to conclusions and they're going to blame whoever the person next to them has said is at fault. Mm -hmm. And that's it. And that's that divide is still widening. Yes, mm -hmm. the ripple yeah. effect. Okay, let me take more some comments. Wurola says, I am sad for a country that keeps putting out the tribal cards whenever it is convenient for political elites and followers. We must all focus on competence above everything. That's from Wurola. Mm -hmm. I think you have some comments, um, uh, okay. Uti and Isi. Okay, um, this is from Angela. She says, tribal bias seems to only work when national cake needs to be eaten. And another comment from Wale says, I always say we need to de 
the emphasize, I don't understand what he's, I think he, he meant. The emphasize you mean? He, I think he meant empathize or something, a state of origin. No, the, uh, the, the emphasize, the, the emphasize. The emphasize yes. state of origin, tribe, and have more, have a more nationalistic approach in Nigeria. In fact, I agree with that, because what you are feeling from, they should remove that part of the form that says, State of origin. origin. Remove but that's it. what they usually because use. Because that is the beginning of all this problem. Uti, you have to a comment to do. Exactly. Yes, yeah, so my comment here is from um, Ade. He says, Good evening, ladies. Happy birthday to Lami, um, our lady lawyer. The intertribal marriage has lost its value in Nigeria since social studies and history has been taken off among school subjects. Exactly. I remember growing up, I used to travel to, to northern and eastern parts of Nigeria on holidays without fear. Since the Northerners tasted power through Obasanjo as military officer to Shagari, Nigeria started discriminating amongst others till now. Mm -hmm. So, I, I, I have mixed feelings about this comment. But, I mean, I sort of agree with the, the gaps that are, are happening because we no longer teach our history. And it's not just even from a school perspective. For me... Nigeria's history is one of the hardest things to come by. Hmm. Like, people steadily trying to, to, to just make us forget that certain things happen. Yeah. If you remember, there was a, a, it wasn't necessarily a meme, but there was a story going around about how President Buhari was the only person to vote against um, a Nigerian Nigeria. because he was of exactly. a different tribe. Mm -hmm. And I seriously, like, you know, I'm a geek, right? I seriously tried to research that story. History was nowhere to be found. Mm -hmm. I think the only person, the only thing I eventually read was something written by, I think it was Cheta, that tried to break down what it was and, you know, to debunk it and say, no, that's not what happened. There was a background to it and all of that. Yeah. But the reality is a lot of us don't know our history. Mm. And that is a very dangerous place to be because then anybody can sell you anything and you will buy it hook, line and sinker. Hmm. But people without a history And particularly history when you have no a identity. highly uneducated populace. Mm -hmm. It's very, very scary. So what do we so think? So now that, you know... Yeah. Yeah, Sorry, Uti, I was going to come to Isi and, and you. What do you think now, if we say we want to rise above this tribal biases, you know, mm -hmm. what are the immediate steps in terms of finding solutions that we should be taking, you know, mm -hmm. rising above this tribal bias? You've, you've proffered education as one of it. It's a so, major role. Yeah. It plays a huge role because the moment we have good quality education in Nigeria, not only in the north, but in the south as well, because we know that there are some pocket areas that the education system has been, has been totally um, deroded. Mm. So we, if we, the moment we are able to get this right, and one thing we need to understand, education is not about you, you know, going to school and learning math and English. You have to totally change the mindset of these children to think globally and you know look beyond what you see we have leaders look at what happened in um, in um, PIB today we had people who are supposed to be leaders Shakiri leaders punching they were each punching other. each other <laughs> if they were educated an educated man how many times have you seen that happen mm. in the court of law um, in um, in the house of rep in uh, um, in the UK no they defy to no, not 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 throwing punches <laughs> not throwing punches let me, they let me have call war of words war of words but not throwing punches let me let me call on richard i think richard has something to say to us thank mm. you for calling let's hear what you have to say Oh, Richard, are you there? Oh, shit, we're having trouble with the lines. Mm -hmm. All right, so Uti. Where is my Uti? Has she left? <laughs> this question, yeah. this question, Uwa, that you asked is like a jam question. Eh, but we like have to start, from somewhere. start from somewhere. I want to I wanna, I wanna step aside so the question doesn't jam me. <laughs> <laughs> um, but, you know, for me, I think that there are a lot of wounds that need to heal. Yeah. I think we need to learn from the likes of Rwanda, the likes of, I mean, South Africa, he haven't even gotten it right, but, you know, they're doing something. Whether... Um, sorry, Uti, sorry, let me just caught you for a minute. Um, I think we said R Richard is back. Hello, Richard, are you there? Thank you for calling. Let's hear what you have to say. Hello, who are good evening. Thank you for calling, Richard. Yes, I can hear you very well. Go ahead, please. Yes, um, Uwa, I grew up in the city of Kaduna. I was born there. So we have one thing in common there. Oh, okay. Yeah. Growing up in the 80s and in the 90s, the early 90s, 
because now was such a wonderful place to live. We don't, for, for amongst my friends, we don't know who is Igbo, Yoruba, Hausa, whatever. We just live like one fantastic family. Mm. The major problem, you talked about the Grand Lukata stuff and the rest that happened before then. But it did not really balkanize Kaduna like from 2000. Yes. When they started, when they had a beauty pageant that they made one funny comment about the, the prophet and That's stuff like that. And from there, you know, I still have a family out in Kaduna, mm. but I hate going to Kaduna. Mm. That's the way we're so divided. Even here in Lagos that I live, I'm an Igbo man. My Yoruba landlord, I've had so many of them that are still giving me their house. Yes. They say, because I am Igbo. Mm -hmm. And I ask one question. What, what is the problem in this country? Mm. Just like you said, put, we had so much expectation for this president, but but the guy has succeeded in dividing Nigeria so much. Mm. I don't know how what will happen to Nigeria in the next two three years. Mm. I'm telling you, it is so bad. Thank what you, you so said much. about what happened at the mechanic workshop today, mm. I was also at the mechanic workshop today. What they were discussing was what happened in Olu and what happened in the West. Mm. That's the only thing that they've been discussed. And the attack on that building or the road, mm. what is happening? For how long will this happen? Wow. God needs to help us. Though. Thank you so much, Richard, Thank you for your call. Much, yeah. All right. So, Uti, you, I mean, when you hear things like this, it actually makes it feel it's hopeless. So, you, this is your jump question they are saying. It comes to, you know, to the fore. But, but let us start from somewhere, Uti. Let's try. If, I mean, it really does make you feel hopeless. And, I mean, I, I've never shared... Um, I think I've shared with everybody who's ever met me how much I'm passionate about Nigeria, how I choose to be here. Um, but yeah, you know, I, I, I feel that hopelessness sometimes now hmm. because you just think Nigeria was the way forward. Yeah, It's so palpable. Like you feel overwhelmed by this feeling of hopelessness. I mm -hmm. mean, it takes your faith sometimes just to keep you going. Yeah. But like I was saying that for me, I feel that a lot of open wounds that all these different elements of financial strife, the economy not doing very well, people having a lot of complaints, a lot of anger and animosity in them against this president who, like our caller just rightly said, we had hope. We had expectations. We thought it was change. Mm -hmm. And all we got was more of the same. So we're even more Negative distrusting changes. of each other. The behavior is creating chasms. Mm -hmm. So again, people everywhere people sit now, people are just like, look, Everything that has been done so far shows me that this, nobody cares about me. Absolutely. In Nigeria. So we have to, you know, like I said, those wounds need to be healed. Mm. The, the ones that we really find where you have people like, you know, that, like you, Uwa, you grew up in Kaduna, so you know mm. what it could be like when we're all living in harmony. Absolutely. It's not impossible. We've done it in this country. Absolutely. But like, we have capitalized or, you know, our leaders have capitalized on on using our tribes against us hmm. and it's the programming is deep hmm. the programming is deep you meet people that you respect you meet people that are educated and when they start you're like hmm? who is this you <laughs> yeah absolutely Uti. Yeah. absolutely you know and, and and you know i i keep i was telling easy just before we, we went on the show that my father literally left after um, you, um, his higher institution left Benin, that he was going to relocate in Kaduna. He wanted somewhere serene, somewhere conservative, where he could raise his children. Mm -hmm. I mean, how many people can do it now? You can just wake up as an Easterner or a Westerner and say you want to go corner to go and, to go and to stay. You know, to, to he was serve, scared. You know, serve, you're scared. You know, you're scared. so I think I think we are going to we are going to keep talking about this. This is a very sensitive topic, but it's something that we must continue to bring on the front front burner mm -hmm. because now, honestly speaking, it has never been this bad. Right, since 2015 up until today, 2021, the, 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 it's getting deeper and deeper. And I like what Uti said. We shouldn't run away from the past. We must call up those histories. Call the Easterners. They have a deep wound that is still very, very fresh. Right? Why can't we sit down and say, you know what, we have wronged you and let us find, find a solution. A As opposed to trying to sweep it under the exactly. carpet every time it comes up. We will mm -hmm. continue to have this fight. So wherever it is, all the issues that we, we that has brew, uh, been brewing in Nigeria that they've been trying so hard to sweep mm -hmm. under the carpet, mm -hmm. all those things, they need to sweep them away from the carpet and, and address them. 
and address them. I think exactly. from there, if we start that, we'll be able to rise above all of these tribal biases and we can now begin to see ourselves as Nigerians first before any other tribe. Absolutely. Oh, thank you, Isi. Thank you. Life. Thank you, Uti. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> All right, so Waze was birthed from the need to inform, inspire, influence lives towards action. And this year, we're starting our CSR focused on curbing unemployment in Nigeria. So if you are a company and you'd like to partner with us, please partner with us by allocating internship slots. And if you're a job seeker, keep watching Waze. Follow us on all our social media handles and keep telling all your friends to watch uh, Waze. And this will be an all-year-round engagement. So it's going to go all the way to the end of the year. All right, so if you missed today's quote, here it is again. <laughs> Tribal injustice. This thief is from another tribe. He is guilty as charged. So, kill him. <laughs> this thief is from our tribe. He may be guilty as charged, but leave him. He's our thief. That's what maybe is I mean, this quote is so apt. <laughs> we need to move away from this. We'll see you live tomorrow at 8 p.m. as we bring you another great conversation. Enjoy. <laughs>